Okay, continuing. Potassium bromate, brominated flour, found in wraps, rolls, breadcrumbs, bagel chips, flatbreads. It's dangerous because it's derived from the same harmful, harmful chemicals as brominated vegetable oil. Brominated flour is used to decrease baking time and reduce costs. Huh. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Reduce costs, you know? Yeah. Only problem is it's linked to kidney damage, cancer, and nervous system damage. It's banned in Europe, Canada, Canada and China. Banned in China, but not in America. Huh. Isn't that something? You know, communist China that uses labor camps to enslave its people and is killing its people right and left, but they ban food additives that are legal in America. But don't you worry, because God's judgment is not on America yet. We're going to be all right. We're going to survive and just come out in massive revival and everything else. Yeah, uh-huh. You're crazy if you believe that. Propylene glycol. This you'll find as an artificial sweetener. Uh, in antifreeze. No, wait, in food. No, actually, it's in both. And it's also, if you study the whole hydrofracking thing where they're drilling holes down into the ground, especially here in northern Pennsylvania, drilling holes down into the ground and they shoot all these chemicals down in there and, and fracture the earth and then get the gas out, the gas wells, and it's poisoning people's water systems and all kinds of horrible stuff. One of the hydrofracking chemicals that they use is propylene glycol. And you want to put that into your body? You know, and, and we have this weird notion here in America that a little bit of poison is not that bad. You know, isn't it interesting? Because that same thing carries over into the spirit realm. Well, you know, okay, the NIV, yeah, they might attack the deity of Jesus Christ, you know, in Luke 2.33 and 1 Timothy 3.16. And stuff, but it's just a little bit. Uh, brethren, why don't we want a Bible that has no errors in it. Why make excuses for the new versions knowing that they have errors? Why make excuses for going and fellowshipping at a building someplace when you know that there are problems there and you know that the pastor is not about to change? Well, I'll put up with a little bit of poison. See, um, if you get into natural health, you'll understand that there is absolutely no way that you can overdose on natural health. But if you take a lot of these food additives that we have readily in our food here in America, if you take them in large quantities, you're dead. But small little doses just will kill you slowly. See, that way the hospitals can get you into a bed someplace and just bleed you dry and just take all the money that you've worked hard to build up over the years. What about aspartame? Again, a lot of people have been deceived into thinking, I don't want pure sugar, I'm gonna go with NutraSweet, which has aspartame in it. I'll go with low sugar things. Uh, that's stupid. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Aspartame is another deadly toxin. If you wanna study it, you know, look it up or whatever, it is bad stuff, you know? Don't fall for the low fat, low calorie, you know, diet soda, that's another good one. Diet so soda is bad enough, but diet soda is 10 times worse than regular soda. I mean, that stuff will kill you deader than a mackerel. I mean, it, stay away from diet soda. Okay, and it's interesting because what are these food additives designed to do? They're designed to make food taste and look better than what God has created. Huh. You see, it's a subtle little attack on the Lord. Subtle, mind you, very subtle, but it's there. God, what God has created, just doesn't have the right taste to it. It's too fattening. It's too bad for you or whatever else. So we can make it better by, you know, adding these toxic chemicals to it. It's very, very bad. Now here's something else. Um, and I'll get back on that other subject here in just a minute. But there's another thing 
which is all through food, and you won't believe some of the things that are going to be on this list, and that is cellulose. You say, what's cellulose? That sounds good and, and nutritious. Cellulose is a fancy word for sawdust. You say, no, come on, Brian, now, come on. Sawdust. I am not joking. And it's all through your processed foods. Okay? And by the way, before I continue, I will say this about the other subject there of, of food additives that are designed to make your food taste better. What they're also designed, they're, they're designed to kill you slowly. They're designed to make your food look and taste better, but they're also designed to make you hungry. So you eat that food, you come away feeling hungry. Do you ever get real hot on a hot day and you drink a couple sodas and after three or four ice cold sodas, you're still thirsty? Doesn't quench your thirst. Makes you more thirsty actually, which makes you drink more soda. The love of money is the root of all evil. Hmm. Do you think that might have something to do with it? Yeah. But here's a list of foods that contain cellulose. Aunt Jemima frozen blueberry pancakes. Aunt Jemima original syrup and original syrup light. Huh. Syrup with sawdust in it? Sure. Morning Star Farms chicken nuggets. Morning Star Farms chicken patties original. Morning Star Farms buffalo wings veggie wings. See, you go to the store and you see this vegetarian wings or vegetarian burgers, veggie burgers or something like that, and you go, I'm going to eat that because I want to lose weight. No, what you're eating is you're eating a processed food that has sawdust in it. And again, what is it designed to do? It's to, again, it's designed, you eat sawdust, it goes into your stomach, and your stomach goes, what is this? I can't do anything with this. But you see, it makes you feel full. But you're not full. And what happens is your body's going, I need nutrients here. I got to find nutrients from food. I'm not getting it from sawdust that you're eating. So your body starts going, I need, I need to find nutrients. I got to find nutrients. So you're hungry, which makes you eat more food. So instead of eating just one box of processed food, now you go, man, I'm still hungry. Oh, wow, I'm still hungry. And you go and you eat more processed food. You see the deception in this whole thing? You see how these companies are doing this on purpose, and yes they are, they're doing it on purpose to make you buy more of their food and to buy more of their product. They get you to a point where you're not being satisfied hunger or thirst. And so I'm going to tell you right now, gluttony is a sin. Sure, it's a sin. It's a lack of self-control. But in some ways, a lot of people, it's not their fault. Because they're eating processed food. I mean, they shouldn't be eating processed food. But I'm saying, you eat processed food, you're coming out not being satisfied. So you're eating more food than you should. Because your body needs more food because it's not getting any nutrients from this junk. Hmm. That's why you should eat whole foods. Foods that come as close to nature as possible. Okay? Meat that comes from the butcher, and it's there in a the package, and it's all bloody and everything else, you know, and it's red meat. You eat that stuff and put a little bit of seasoning on it, you know, it's going to do you good. Okay? You drink raw milk. You go and you, you get some good fruits and vegetables, raw, not the junk stuff in the frozen package and stuff like that. Uh-uh. If you can eat it raw, again, if you cook it, you're killing a lot of the vitamins in it. If you can, you know, take uh, things like mayonnaise and make your own dips, ranch dips or blue cheese dip or whatever, and eat it with your raw fruits and vegetables, I mean, we do that all the time. You're getting the benefits of raw vegetables. Well, we don't use fruits, excuse me. But, you, you know, you're getting the benefits of the raw vegetables. And it's also, it tastes great. And it's filling. You wouldn't believe how filled up you will get eating regular, totally fattening dip with raw vegetables. And, you know, eat a sandwich and, and some meat on it or something like that, you know, you'll be good. You know, you'll be good for a long time. But you eat this processed food that I'm reading about here, it'll, you'll, you'll just be hungry. 
all the time. And guess what? The body's going to take that sawdust that you're eating, that cellulose, and it's going to start turning it into fat. Because it can't digest it, it's going, what do I do with this? Just turn it into fat. All right. Ego. Nutri-Green Blueberry Waffles. See, sounds healthy, doesn't it? But it's not. Ego Strawberry Waffles. Ego Blueberry Waffles. Cinnabon Pancakes Originals. Cinnabon Pancakes Caramel. Cinnabon Snack Bars Original. I'm not going to read this whole list because it's huge. But uh, Weight Watchers International uses cellulose in the following products. Vanilla, vanilla Ice Cream Sandwich. English Toffee Crunch Ice Cream Bar. Giant Cookies and Cream Ice Cream Bar. General Mills goes down through there. Fiber One Ready to Eat Muffins. See, so you look at that and you go, oh wow, Fiber One. But not knowing that the fiber is not natural. It's sawdust. Unless you want to call sawdust natural, I guess it is, you know. And just, you know, why don't you eliminate the middleman, go down to a sawmill and just pick up some sawdust and go at it, you know. That's what you're basically doing when you're eating this junk. It's just, you know, smaller and more condensed. Pillsbury. You can down through there. Moist Supreme Classic Yellow Cake Mix. Mozzarella and Pepperoni Pastry Puffs. Down through. Betty Crocker. McDonald's. Oh, boy. Fish Filet Patty McRib Premium Caesar Salad. They're using cellulose in their Caesar salad? Mm-hmm. And how many poor people are going out there and thinking... I'm going to lose weight, so I'm just going to get a salad at McDonald's because I'm watching my weight. Uh, well, you're going to watch it. You're going to watch it look by looking down and seeing it come out. That's how you're going to watch your weight. All right. McDonald's strawberry sundae. Yeah. Cellulose. You know, secular article. I didn't come up with this stuff. And it goes down through all the different, you know, crispy chicken club sandwich, Angus mushroom and Swiss snack wrap. Shredded cheddar, jack cheese, used in ranch snack wrap, crisp, crispy and grilled honey mustard snack wrap, all this stuff. Barbecue sauce, sweet and sour sauce, cellulose in them. Shredded Parmesan cheese, a lot of your shredded Parmesan cheese has cellulose. Um, biscuits, vanilla, uh, reduced fat ice cream, McFlurries, you know. I mean, I used to eat this stuff all the time. Strawberry triple thick milkshake, vanilla triple thick Milkshake and cho chocolate as well, of course, so don't think you can have the chocolate and get away with it. You can't. Sugar-free vanilla syrup. You know, again, people are like, you know, hey, I can take the sugar-free or the low-fat and it'll be good for me. No, it's got cellulose in it. It's got wood shavings in it. You know, sawdust. Excuse me, not wood shavings, sawdust. Sara Lee uses cellulose in the following products. Jimmy Dean frozen breakfast bowl, sausage and gravy. Uh, Jimmy, G Jimmy Dean delights turkey sausage breakfast bowl, Jimmy Dean Delights, turkey sausage croissant, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And the website is thestreet.com slash story slash 11012915 slash one slash cellulose dash wood dash pulp dash never dash tasted dash so dash good dot html. I'll put the link down in the description box again. But you see there, again, you know, a secular news article saying the cellulose is all through the food, the processed food. You know, the stuff that's convenient. You know, if you listen to my sermon on the danger of convenience, um, it's very dangerous to just want to have food that you can cook quickly. Uh, good food, the food that God created, the kind of stuff that would grow out here, you know, in nature, that you could just go and pick it, you know, and, and uh, eat it. Um, that kind of food is going to take a while to prepare. That's how God designed it. Good health takes a while. Okay? And you know another interesting thing about using sawdust in food? The Nazi death camps back there with Hitler, he actually used sawdust to make bread for the prisoners. Boy, those Nazi death camps sure were bad and, and everything, weren't they? Yeah, kind of like America today. The only thing is, it was forced on the prisoners. Most people in America buy the sawdust food willingly. Pay good money for it. Then wonder why they're overweight. Hmm. Interesting. 
little bit of advice. If it is in a pre-packaged box, you need to avoid it like the plague. Tell you what, it cuts down on time when you're shopping. Go to the grocery store, you see that aisle, the frozen foods aisle, you know, and the frozen goods and all that stuff. Walk right past it. Get it fresh as often as you can, you know. Your breads, your, your grains, you know, make sure it's not some kind of ultra-processed white flour type of stuff. But get your breads there, get your fruits, get your vegetables, get your meat, you know. Those are the types of things that you want. If it's stuff that's going to have a really, really long shelf life and everything else, it's going to be filled with preservatives. And it's going to give you poor health. I've learned that. I've had to learn that the hard way. Okay? 37 years, 36 years, excuse me, 36 years of my life was bad health in many ways. You know, it's only recently, and that's, that should be encouragement to any of you out there. You don't have to say, well, you know, if you want good health, it's going to take you, you know, 10 or 20 years to get it. No, you can have it within a few months. But it's going to take a real dedication on your part. You're going to have to be diligent. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 7 says, All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. You know, it's amazing when you start to look at how much money you spend on food in a week. But you know, there's a lot of people that labor, put in all that time to get food, and yet the appetite's not filled. Because they're not getting the nutrients from the food. They're getting sawdust, cellulose, and they're getting all these other toxic chemicals. Okay, and one other toxic chemical that you need to eliminate from your diet, now this is not going to be in your food, generally speaking, but it can be in your water, and it can usually is in your toothpaste, and that is fluoride. Fluoride is another one that is extremely toxic. And you say, now Brian, that one I have to disagree with because fluoride is, is recommended by my dentist. Okay, tell you what you can do. Go and get some strawberries, okay? Fresh strawberries someplace, and eat the whole thing of fresh strawberries. See how you feel. Now go and take a whole tube of toothpaste. Don't do this, by the way, but eat the whole tube of toothpaste. You say, now come on, Brian, why would you compare those two things? One's natural, the one's chemical. And if you look at the back of your tube of toothpaste, it says there on the warning label, if you ingest more than a pea-sized amount of this, call the poison control center. Remember what I said earlier about, oh, it's just a little bit of poison. It, it won't kill you. Not at first. And then do, do yourself another favor if you still don't believe me. But it is, in fact, poison. Your fluoride. Look up dental fluorosis. Okay? Dental fluorosis is getting too much fluoride. You're not going to see a sickness coming from somebody saying, Boy, I sure ate too many strawberries. Like I said, the worst case, you might get loose bowels or something. That's the worst. And that's just simply your body saying, hey, there's too much of this. i got to get rid of it quickly. You know, that's all it's saying. Your body's not going, oh, I've been poisoned. You know, hmm. Eliminate fluoride from your diet. Another thing fluoride will do is it will actually mess up your thyroid gland, which is going to make it more difficult to lose weight. Again, you're going to gain weight. You're going to have problems. So you can get toothpaste without fluoride in it. Fluoride-free toothpaste. And there's also another chemical, sodium lauryl sulfate and SLS, you know, and try to get it without that too. Um, I think, uh, what is it, Yasun or something like that? J-A-S-O-N, but it's like a, a Finnish or Swedish or Yasun uh, brand toothpaste. That's pretty good. I, there's videos on YouTube that you can make your own toothpaste with baking soda and, and a bunch of other things. There's a lot of stuff. It's just You're just going to have to research on your own. I can't provide it all here in this study. But all these things build up and cause you to get out of shape and cause you to be sick. And again, I brushed with fluoride toothpaste for most of my life. You know, and they say, oh, it's fighting cavities. Well, gee, that's helpful because I had cavities throughout my life. You know, people say, well, if you stop using fluoride toothpaste, you'll get cavities like crazy. Oh, really? Since I gave up fluoride toothpaste, and this one has been for a few years now, I haven't had 
one cavity. And of course there's stuff you can watch on the thing of fluoride. Um, what's the thing? Fluoride deception? There's a documentary out there on fluoride, the whole fluoride scam. Uh, you know, just look it up on YouTube. Um, okay, next thing here. Moderation. Okay, first we looked at inspection. That thing is very important right now. Inspection is very important. Next we have moderation, okay? You have good food before you. You go to, you know, you have some good meat there and you got some good cheese. You know, cheese and meat is wonderful. I love to eat cheese and meat. And, you know, vegetables and dip and boy, you got it all set up there. Now next comes moderation. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. Philippians 4, verse 5. We're going to see the one reference in your Bible, King James Bible, to the word moderation. Philippians 4, verse 5 says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, it's good to talk about your moderation. You know, and to be a good witness. Like the brother I referred to earlier that lost 150 pounds that's a good witness. It's an encouragement to the brethren. He's letting his moderation be known to all men. But there's also another way that you can let your moderation be known to all men. And that way is by going out and being in the world. If you're walking around and you're two or three hundred pounds, you know, overweight, well, you're going to be letting your lack of moderation be known unto all men. See, it's going to be a problem, in other words. You don't want to let that be seen of people. Okay, you should let your moderation be known unto all men. That's very important. All right. What about exercise? You say, well, we've been talking about nutrition, but what about exercise? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 24 through 27. Okay, it says here, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hmm. You know, this mountain where we are preaching right now, this, this little, it's not really a huge mountain, it's only, I think, a, maybe a few hundred feet above sea level or something, but, you know, it's not even a thousand feet above sea level. But the point is, it's a steep climb getting up here. Now, if I got, let myself go and I get really badly out of shape, I'm not going to be able to climb up here anymore. And I'm not going to be able to spend the kind of hours I do in study and, and emailing people, answering people's questions, and going out and putting out tracks and stuff, you know, distributing tracks. I'm not going to be able to do it. See? That's why I have to keep under my body and bring it into subjection. And there are times, you know, we had a, a party, birthday party, and it's like there's a birthday cake and everything else, and you go, man, that's good. And I know it's, it's all good ingredients in that, in that cake. I think I'm going to have another piece. Uh, no. If you're a man given to appetite, put a knife to your throat. Say no. You're trying to lose weight. You practice moderation. You don't have to say, nope, no cake at all for me. I will never eat cake one more day in my whole life. You don't have to do that. But what you do is you practice moderation. You say, I'll take one piece. Well, here, brother, have another piece. I had one. That's enough. See, that again is a good, a good testimony to the brethren. You're around other Christians and stuff. They say, here, brother, have another donut. Here, have, you know, no thank you. I already had one. That's enough. Oh, come on, brother. Come on. Just one more. No. I've had one. That's enough. That shows self-control. 
But when you're over there pigging out and you're just cramming donuts into your face, you're not showing moderation. You're showing a bad testimony at that point. And it might not affect you when you're in your 20s, but you get up into your 30s, if you lived 10 years destroying your health, it's going to start to show up. You're going to start having heart problems. You're going to have to start having health problems and, and all kinds of, of issues. You don't want that. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Turn there next. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 through 9, says here, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Okay, what kind of exercise is this talking about? Well, let's continue. For bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of some acceptation. Are you following along in your Bible? It's not what it says. It says, worthy of all acceptation. You see, bodily exercise does profit. But if, again here, moderation, if you're spending too much time exercising your body, going to a gym and working out and whatever else, and you're not spending that time in the Word, this is more important than bodily exercise. But you have to have moderation. You can't do all this, reading your Bible and praying and witnessing, you can't do all that and forsake the body. You have to keep the thing going. That's the tricky part. Okay, That's why it's diff difficult. You have to learn to exercise yourself spiritually and physically. And it's kind of interesting because if you're out there doing the work of the Lord, you're going to get actual physical exercise. Pretty interesting. But you see, you need to have that moderation. Now what's the third thing? Avoid. What kind of things should you avoid? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Just jump back to the beginning of the chapter there. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now look at the things here. These are doctrines of devils. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Okay, let me just stop there for a minute. Any time that you get a Christian coming along and telling you that you should abstain from meat, and it's interesting because the new versions, by the way, they'll say certain types of food. They take out the word meat, thereby proving that they have doctrines of devils in them. But the fact is, if somebody comes along and they tell you you should abstain from meat, you're not dealing with a Christian philosophy there. They might be a Christian that say, says that to you, but they're deceived. They're one of the ones that has, that has departed from the faith. And they're giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Vegetarianism, forced vegetarianism, is not of the Lord. Never, in any case. Not ever going to happen. You say, how do you know that? Let's keep reading. Verse 4, For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Notice it does not say every type of food is good. It says every creature of God is good to thee for food, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Okay? Very important. I'm going to show you why this is extremely important. Verse 6, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So if I want to be a good minister of Jesus Christ, I need to tell you about this and warn you out there, the brethren, and say, do not fall for the lie of vegetarianism. Don't fall for it. You say, well, perhaps your body is, is too acidic. Maybe there's, there's, it's too alkaline or something like that because you have too many meats in your diet. Don't fall for that bunch of nonsense, okay? There again, natural health can be a good thing. 
but you can take it too far and you can get messed up in this weird vegetarianism, vegan, all that stuff like that. That stuff's a load of nonsense, okay? God did not design you to live solely on fruits and vegetables, all right? You start that kind of junk up, you're out of the will of God. I'm telling you that right now. Forced vegetarianism, your body will start to break down. You need to have animal fats and protein. You have to have that. And you knock that stuff out of your diet, you're going to have all kinds of problems. And don't say, well, I'm unhealthy and I'm unsick because I'm eating processed foods and stuff. And so there's red meat in that. So that's why red meat is bad. No, 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 no. If you eat real, true, whole foods that are red meat, you'll be fine. Okay? And dairy products, too. That's another thing that these, you know, new age idiots will come up with. They'll say that all dairy products are bad for you. Yeah, okay. The only, the only thing that all people and all mammals out there, too, can live off of for the first few years of their life is milk. Okay? Raw milk. You say, I don't want to drink raw milk. Well... If you were a baby and you were breastfed, you did. <laughs> and if you were bottle fed on, on, you know, formula, well, I'm sorry for you. That stuff's bad. It's toxic. But continuing. Another question. What did Jesus cook? Matthew chapter 14. Turn to a few more places here and then we're done. I know I get kind of long-winded sometimes, brethren, but, you know, you have to endure to the end to be saved from bad doctrine. I'm fooling around, of course, you know that. Matthew 14, verse 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Victuals being your King James word there for food. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up the, of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full, and they had eaten, they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. So, did the Lord use uh, some kind of processed food there? No. Probably the fish that was there was either fresh fish or possibly smoked fish. You know, but it was still fresh food. You know, and the bread, a lot of times, we're going to see here in just a few minutes, the bread was something that they baked it in the morning and you ate it by the end of the day. You weren't storing it up. Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verse 32. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes, and gave thanks, and brake them, and gave to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. And they that did eat were four thousand men, beside women and children. And he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coasts of Magdala. You say, uh-oh, wait a second here. Contradiction. Because see, in one place, first time there it said 5,000. Here it says 4,000. Uh-oh. Now let's continue. Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? 
So Jesus did this miracle not once, but twice. Two times he feeds the multitude with fish and bread. Huh. Meat and grain. Hmm. Interesting. And that meat and grain was from the local area. It wasn't some kind of shipped in exotic food or something like that. You know, it was the local food there. Jesus feeds them twice. That's interesting because they forgot there. They were thinking when Jesus was talking about the leaven of the Pharisees, they were thinking, we didn't bring any bread. Oh, great. You were supposed to get the bread. No, I didn't get that, you know. And they didn't even have, remember the fact that Jesus was able to provide. Very interesting. But now let's look at uh, Luke chapter 24. It's interesting while you're turning there, Matthew 6 verse 11 says in the Lord's Prayer, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Hmm. See, back then they would have been cooking their bread every day. Real bread is not going to have a real long shelf life. It goes bad after a few days. Luke 24, verse 41 through 43. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? Yes, Jesus ate meat. He was not a vegetarian. And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb. It was not some kind of, you know, ultra sugar, you know, sweet stuff kind of deal. Honeycomb. You can't get much more natural than that. Verse 43, and he took it and did eat before them. So again, you know, he has their broiled fish, which is good for you, and honeycomb. Finally, let's go to John chapter 21. John 21 verse 9. John chapter 21, verse 9. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. And for all they were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So you see there, again, Jesus makes things fresh. And I'm going to tell you right now, the fresher, the closer you can get to fresh food that the Lord, the way it was created by the Lord, you know, uh, let me, right now, let me, excuse me here. See that? That is a wild blueberry. Now, there's absolutely no fertilizer on this thing. It is completely wild. I didn't even wash the thing. Okay? And there's, you know, nature areas and stuff right now, especially, there's blackberries, boysenberries, black raspberries, wine berries. I mean, there's all kinds of berries that are just out in the wild. Lots and lots of food that's just out here in the wild. You know, another good reason to live in the country. But it's good. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this food. And see, the closest you can get your food to the way it's grown out of nature, to the way it's grown on a farm, you know, if you can find a local meat distributor in your area that sells grass-fed, you know, beef or whatever, this thing's a process, brethren. Don't be frustrated because this seems like an insurmountable thing. How on earth am I going to get all this done right away? It didn't, it didn't happen for us right away. You might have a hard time finding a raw milk, milk distributor. Um, Lifeway Kiefer uh, might be a good option for you if you live in an area where there's absolutely no uh, raw milk distributors. There are some stores that sell Lifeway Kiefer. Again, you can get on their website and you can buy some of that. That'll get you the probiotics and, and some of the enzymes and things that you need. Um, there are options. But the whole purpose of this sermon is, number one, I wanted to show you, yes, gluttony is a sin. Number two, you can do something about it. 
if you're sick and tired of living in poor health and not having energy and everything else, you can do something about it. You don't have to live that way. It is not God's design for you to live in poor health. You know, you can, you can get out of that lifestyle is the whole point. And the best way to do it is not low fat, not, you know, all kinds of this you know, diet sodas and diet chips and diet, all that stuff. That stuff will kill you quicker. I mean, just, pff, you'd be better off just eating junk food than that stuff. Okay, Weight Watchers and all this other junk. Stay away from that stuff. Go back to a traditional animal fat type of a diet. Okay, again there, you know, your, a lot of your canola oil, peanut oil, a lot of that stuff, real bad. Um, you want to stick with olive oil, with um, coconut oil. Thank you, my wife had to remind me. Um, uh, bacon grease. You can eat bacon, take your bacon grease and, you know, save it in a jar, let it cool down. You know, when you want to cook some eggs or whatever, don't use Teflon pans. Another thing, Teflon's bad, chips off, you know, it, it, it heats up and things, you're breathing in, you're eating plastic. You know, there again, plastic has a, a chemical called bisphenol A in it, real bad for you, toxic again, makes men effeminate and... It's a, basically an, a synthetic estrogen, um, real bad. You know, you have to do some research on this stuff. But, you know, stick with stainless steel cookware, not aluminum, not Teflon. You can take a little bit of bacon grease or a little bit of uh, um, olive oil or a little bit of coconut oil. Put that in there and let it melt on your stove. And then you can cook your eggs in it. You can cook your, uh, you know meats in it, whatever else. You can do that. Um, there's so many options here. But the point is, you want to get back to the way God created food to be. All right, you want to get back to a, a natural diet of God created foods. And if you're, you know, and then you're going to have to, you know, kind of uh, weigh out, you know, okay, I have some real physical activity to do on such and such a day, so I'm going to eat some really high fat foods. Or I'm not going to be doing much, so I'm going to eat more fruits and vegetables. See, it's a process. That's the whole issue here. It is a process. Good health is something that's going to take time. It took me a year, you know, essentially. I mean, it, it's, I've been working on my health now for a year. My food allergies are gone. My energy is through the roof. Um, you sleep better at night, you, you know, less depression. I rarely ever get headaches. I used to, I used to practically live on Excedrin. I was just getting migraine head, headaches all the time. It was it was bad. Um, there again, tea in the morning. I would put white sugar in it. I got rid of that. Went to honey, natural honey. I put that in. It was a little weird tasting at first. That's something that you're going to have to get on to, by the way. A lot of this stuff is going to taste weird to you at first because you're used to these chemicals, these processed uh, preservatives that are in your food. Um, but once that stuff's out of your system. You're not even going to be, I can't stand the taste of that stuff now. I don't even drink soda. I don't want soda, you know. And it's going to be a process, brethren. I'm, I'm telling you that. But if you are willing to put in the time, if you're willing to put in the effort, you know, the Lord will even bless you. I believe not just the quality of the food, but even going to it, your nutrition and doing it the Lord's way. You know, you're not going to find... Um, vegetarians in here outside of the of the garden of eden you know and some say before the flood but you got to understand that the atmosphere was different back then you know there were other things there they were able to get enough protein from the nuts and whatever else but after that you aren't going to see the lord saying hey you need to just eat vegetables you need to have some meat in your diet just get the right kind of meat and don't eat too much of it if you're not going to be burning it off see you control your weight by doing things the Lord's way. So some final points to consider. Okay, number one, gluttony is a sin. Don't try to duck it and say, well, you know, like I said earlier, I have a healthy appetite. No, gluttony is a sin. Um, you need to get that under control. Number two, gluttony ruins your testimony and diminishes your ability to serve the Lord. That's what gluttony does. If you can't control your flesh 
on the level of food, you're not going to be able to control your flesh in other areas. You're going to struggle with sin in other areas because you're not used to telling your flesh no. Number three, processed foods might be convenient to prepare, but they are toxic. Avoid the processed foods in the grocery store. Avoid the stuff with the high fructose corn syrup and the MSG and the propylene glycol and all the other stuff. Avoid it. Number four, a diet of whole foods will give you more energy and keep you in the race of life. Number five, avoid the toxic food additives. That's going to take work, brethren. You're going to have to be diligent. You're going to have to go through the grocery store. It's going to take you a little bit more time. It's going to be frustrating because you're going to see your favorite salad dressing, your favorite chips, your favorite pretzels, your favorite meats, your favorite whatever. Because a lot of times your lunch meats, your processed meats, you know, that are cut and stuff packaged, you look at them things, they're putting high fructose corn syrup in it. It doesn't even make sense. Most ketchup is high fructose corn syrup. You know, it's in there. There are some, I think Heinz makes some that's natural and that doesn't have it. You know, Hunt's. Okay, Hunt's. Thank you. Hunt's ketchup. Okay? But it's going to frustrate you because you're going to look and you're going to see this product that you really like and you go, oh boy, high fructose corn syrup. You're going to have to be diligent here, brethren, if you want to lose the weight. Okay? Number six, you need to exercise. Don't just think living the right kind of diet is going to make it better, make you lose your weight. You're going to have to exercise, okay? And I didn't say you have to join a gym either, all right? There's a lot of other ways to exercise. You know, I would personally stay away from gyms, you know, unless you're in an area and there's not much else you can do. But I don't really have a desire to go see immodestly dressed women and stuff and whatever, you know. Um, but just good physical labor outdoors. Uh, just going for walks, you know, you might have to drive out to a country area and just go for a walk down through the woods or something else, you know, make sure you have a compass so you don't get lost. Um, but anyhow, you know, stick to trails if you're not familiar with the area. Um, number seven, stick to the Bible diet of meat from God's creatures, unpasteurized dairy products, organic fruits and vegetables, and whole grain wheat breads is usually what you want. Number eight, don't mess around with low fat or diet foods and drinks. Stay away from that stuff. That is not going to help you lose weight. It's going to make all kinds of other problems in your life. Number nine, absolutely no soda or fast food. If you want to lose weight, if you are obese and you want to lose weight, you have to say no to any fast food or soda. Has to be that way, brethren. Number 10, and most importantly, and I put this thing at the end not because it's the least important, but because I wanted to finish with this. The most important thing that you need to do when you're ready to start a diet is pray and ask for the Lord's help and guidance. Don't just take what I've said as gospel truth, so to speak. Do the research on your own. Look this stuff up. Ask the Lord for wisdom. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. James chapter 1 there. You know, ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the Lord for guidance in your weight loss program. Don't ask your doctor. Ask the Lord. All right. So that's going to be it for this message, the sin of gluttony. I'm sure this was a long one. I don't know what the time is here yet, but um, this is an important subject. And it's a subject that a lot of people struggle with. Even those people who appear to be slim and trim, if you're eating a lot of processed foods, I'm guaranteeing you, you're feeling it. You're feeling it in the form of headaches, drowsiness, depression, um, just low energy, lack of memory. I mean, a lot of things out there. Uh, brethren, we are under attack. It isn't just a matter of, you know, well, there's some bad foods out there. We are under attack. Okay, they're putting these toxic chemicals that are banned in other countries, they're putting them all through our food. They're trying to kill us. They're trying to get us into the medical establishment, trying to get us into the hospital to take away our money, to rob us of our life. Well, yeah, you know, my wife here just brought up a good point. And eventually they're going to use that sick populace 
to get you into the hospital so that you'll be chipped, microchipped, RFID chips, you know, radio frequency identification devices. That's what they want. They want a sick populace. Okay? You're going to have to be diligent about this thing. You're going to have to put some time into this and make meal time, by the way, a time of expression for being thankful for what God has designed. And when you go out and you get food from nature, go to farm stands, go to little country, you know, markets and things like that where it's locally grown food, go to places like that and then praise the Lord for the things that he allowed that farmer to grow. Not something that came out of a factory, Kellogg's factory or, or you know, whatever, Jimmy Dean factory or something like this or McDonald's, you know, that you can't really thank God for that. That's not really a creature of God. It's not really something that God made. It's something that man made to taste better than what God has made. And spend some time, you know, making your meals. Make them special, you know. Get the family around. Teach your kids how to cook, you know. Stuff like that. That's important. If you're just eating fast food all the time, brethren, I can testify it will affect you. You know? you got to get that thing under control. So let's close here with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray for your people out there. I thank you, Lord, for showing me the truth after all these years when it comes to diet. And Lord, I just pray that uh, your people would be led into the truth. Those that are really struggling with their weight, Lord, are struggling with their health. I pray, Lord, that they would um, not just think that this everything's okay and they'll just continue eating the junk food and the processed food and these toxic chemicals, Lord. But I pray that they would start to be diligent, as your word says, and, and really start to consider diligently what is set before them in the form of food. And that uh, you would just give them strength, Lord, because I know how hard it is to get away from the addiction, these food addictions to these toxic chemicals. I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just help your people out there as they study this issue more on their own and uh, seek to change their lives. And I just pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching and start eating healthy and watch the difference that it makes in your life. So that's it.